Unless it's okay with you. Hey, everybody. This is the Coast to Coast Radio Show on WPKS1. I'm your host, Ron Fitch, sponsored by Chick-fil-A of Route 22 in Union. And I can tell you right now, before I uh, bring on my guest, I'm there all the time. Uh, I was very honored that they would be a sponsor. And I'll break down how good the food is and why you should choose Chick-fil-A over the other fast food restaurants who are second rate. Especially and, for breakfast. Especially for breakfast. And I, here's my guest, uh, Gerard Phelan and... We're going to talk NCAA tournament. There's some things I'm going to agree with you. There's some things I might not agree with you. But I want to talk about the Blue Bloods first. Um, the Kentucky Wildcats, they were eh against Northern Kentucky. It Was it like the Northern Kentucky kids had a chip on their shoulder and they were kind of fired up to play Kentucky? I think you make a good point, Ron. It was partly chip on the shoulder, but also people forget the first game of the tournament, uh -huh. the, that first round game, if you're young. If you're young. And Kentucky's always young. We know that. Yes. You just have to survive in advance. So in that first half, there were some nerves there. And New Jersey's own Isaiah Briscoe showed up big and was a leader. I'm happy because Isaiah is my boy. I know his dad. Actually, his dad's going to come on the show. Uh, I may have him on next week. Um I do want to talk about something that Calipari said, and he's such a genius when it comes to the media. They're saying, well, you're not really, your defense is not, you're not playing as defense, your intensity. What do you think? And he goes, hey, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with freshmen here. So they, they're up and down. So you got, when you're dealing with freshmen, these things kind of happen. But he always deals, see, the thing about him, he always deals with freshmen because they're always going to the NBA. But he always uses that line, and he just cracked me up when he used that line. But, Ron, you said it exactly right. The way he handled that press conference was beautiful. He took all the blame without naming any kids, and it was almost – it reminded me of Allen Iverson. We talking about practice? Yeah, and, but you and know – he said, we're talking about freshmen. <laughs> you got me? We're talking about freshmen. freshmen. But this is why the kids go to Kentucky. Amen, brother. This is why he could come here in my hometown here in New Jersey, in my home state. And we're and live what? from Netherwood. For those out there listening, we're live in Netherwood. Yeah, I love some Field, Netherwood. New he calls Netherwood. Plainfield, New Jersey, WBKS1.com studio. Uh, as a Rutgers grad, that bothers me to see the kids. I mean, I love Cal, and they should go to Kentucky, but you don't want to grab up some of these local kids. That. You can make a comment on that before we go into the next games. No, let's just keep going. My my only comment there is the guy who replaces the guy who's building or trying to build at Rutgers, mm -hmm. that's going to be a good job when he's done in three or four years because they'll have facilities. That's so that you don't want to be – I don't know how to pronounce his name. Peichel? Yeah. Is that how you say the it? Peichel, yeah. You don't want to be Peichel. You want to be the guy who yeah. replaces Peichel. Yes, because he'll be built up and then he'll be ready to win. When Peichel's gone. And they'll have facilities because they got a great AD now. Definitely. Let's now, go back to the to the Blue Bloods, as you call the them. The Blue Bloods. Uh, North Carolina, they look good. They dominated. Uh, this is my issue with North Carolina. They annoy me. The, and I, I've said this several times over the last couple of years. They play soft sometimes. They have a lot of talent. They're, but when they get in certain big games – they get pushed around on the backboards, and you'll see guard the, the guards can get around their guards and score more in the bigger games. And they have a tendency to play soft, as, as talented as they are. I watched them against Duke. I watched them get blown out against Virginia. And I watched games they should have won but, but didn't win, and that's why I don't trust them. But they got a good draw because I don't trust UCLA or Kentucky. So they're kind of all in the same boat. So I don't think – See, if they had got a Kansas, I would pick Kansas. But because there's question marks on those teams, Carolina might have a chance to get out of that bracket. All right, let's just break it down real simple and real concisely. Carolina is the most talented team in the country. Okay. They're deeper than Correct. anyone else. Correct. But And I've had this conversation with Coach Williams more than three or four times in the last five years. Mm -hmm. They do not defend the three. And, and that's why they're going to get – and, and that's when you say soft, I immediately went to, you know what, Ron's right. They don't defend the three. But on the boards this year, they're deep enough. They're better they're on the boards because they have had a history of getting beat off the backboards in big games. I agree a thousand percent. But this year, their they're Achilles heel, for lack of a pun or pardon the pun, <laughs> is they don't defend the three. 
So if they come up against a team that's making buckets from beyond the line, they're going to lose. Now, I'm going to tell you what's a fascinating game is Xavier, Florida State. Xavier has the guards. You know they have the biggest pedigree. Florida State is tremendously athletic. The one long freshman kid, they're thinking about, he's thinking about going to the pros. They don't shoot it as well. <clears throat> they're not as consistent. But I think I'm going to go with Xavier because they got that. Big East teams have a tendency to beat these kind of athletic teams that don't shoot well. I'm going to ride the Musketeers on this one. Well, I thought we were talking about Blue Bloods. I don't see either team making no, it. Gonna, I, don't, I don't see either team making the Final but, but Four. We're but, gonna, but we're going to get to the Blue Blood. They're going to have to play next. Okay. Well, We're, we're going to get there. You, okay. Uh, and I just I, and I'm, your I'm, prediction I'm, on that. I'm rolling with you. You're going to roll with Xavier. No. No? I'm taking Florida State. You're taking Florida State? Because of the injury to Xavier. They haven't been the same. They haven't recovered. I think Xavier will try to beat them up, play Big East, old school defense. Mm -hmm. And that might give him some problems in the first half. Florida State too deep and arguably his best coaching job. Yeah, definitely. His definitely his best coaching job. Now, Arizona is my team to come out of the Final Four. Uh, I love marketing. Did you tell me about marketing? We were sitting and talking about there's a kid coming to Arizona who's a big, who's really good. Yes, we did talk about him okay. la last year. Okay. But to Sean and to Amy, that's Sean's wife. Yeah. Sean and Amy Miller. They call it a coaches, a players program. Excuse, excuse me. This is their year, and the Final Four is in Arizona. Is in Arizona. So I promised him in October, they make it to the Final Four. I'm coming back to the Final Four. Wow. And after last year's Final Four in Houston, which was terrible, the games were great, uh -huh. but the city was horrible. I was like, you know, I'm going to take a couple years off. <laughs> but Arizona is going to make the Final Four this year. That's a good place. And to I'm going to be stuck out there. You're going to be stuck out in Arizona. It's a beautiful place to visit. Well, I believe Arizona is going to win, and Notre Dame and Virginia. I like, I like Notre Dame. I just I don't trust West Virginia. They're always offensively challenged. I know they have a great defense. I think Notre Dame could break that pressure. That's constant. I love Bob Huggins, and you know what's funny about Bob Huggins? I met him at Adidas ABCD camp. Sonny Vaccaro, my Sonny Vaccaro, way back. And I was terrified. I'm like, okay. And I talked to him. I said, this is the nicest guy. Bob Huggins? That's when he was he's at Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. And he was a nice, cordial guy. He still is. He's almost too nice a guy, which is why he has some demons. Okay. But I got to go against you here, Ron. Because West, West Virginia, Virginia is deep. I know that. He's got all his players. I got it. And Notre Dame is not deep. I understand. And I don't think they'll handle... The 40 minutes of hell going back to Arkansas and Arizona that uh, Nolan, what was his name? Nolan Richardson. Yeah, Nolan Richardson. Now right. His, his so, protege is in Arkansas now. Right. Yeah. That, that's what I was thinking about Arkansas. In, yeah. any, in any event, I, I, I love West Virginia. I don't trust them because they always go through these laws in the tournament. I know what you're saying. It's still early in the tournament. If we were talking, you know, Elite Eight weekend, I would go against them. But, but I tell you something, Mike Bray, who always lost in the first round in Notre Dame, got a little magic going on the last couple of years. They've been winning and going to the Sweet 16. Two years ago, even though they lost in the semifinals, Mike Bray won that tournament because high school kids who would never consider going to Notre Dame were calling me up saying, you know what? I want to get a visit to Notre Dame. Can you can you like get me a cell phone number? Wow! Yeah. So, he, so two years ago, when they went on that good run, mm -hmm. when they had the guy who became a pitcher, was that two years or three years? ago? That was um, yes. I know you're talking. About. He went to the Baltimore Orioles. In any event, they were the big winners that year because he changed his style. He never played up tempo until that year. So now high school kids want to play up tempo. They don't want to play. And, and that, that's why I like Notre Dame. I just think Bray has that magic. So you're giving me facts. I'm giving you my feeling. But you know there's an old saying, facts do not care about your emotion. And so, so, Amen, brother. And so I'm wondering if, if you're more right than I am on that one. No, but you know um, what it might come down to? Mm -hmm. Old school, foul shooting. Who, oh. Whoever wins the foul shooting battle. It, no, it's and comes it down West to, Virginia, they foul. They foul. Now, I'm going to tell you something it comes down to, too. Matt Farrell. Can Matt Farrell diagnose this pressure? Can he know when to shoot, know when to pass? Can he do that for the entire game and stay out of foul trouble? Because he's the real key to this game. I, I agree. That's an excellent point. 
But the other thing, going back to Coach Bray, can he manage Farrell's minutes? Yeah. Because he's going to be exhausted at halftime. Yeah. Yeah. How's your backup? How's the backup point guard? Can he handle it? Weak, weak. Oh, boy. Oh, we, we got a call. We have a special guest um, joining us from Virginia. I don't know. Let's see who this call is. Hello, it's Coast to Coast Radio, Ron Fitch. Hey, Ron Fitch, this is James Friday. From- oh, it's it's the Reverend James Friday. I have a co-host with me, uh, G- Gerard Phelan from CBS Sports. Wow. Hello, Gerard. God bless you. God bless you, Reverend. It's a pleasure to have you with us this morning. Uh, you want to talk about these Virginia Cavaliers of yours that can't score? <laughs> Well, actually, I don't even like the Virginia Cavaliers. Um, I'm a North Carolina fan. so. Oh. Yeah, I just talked about Carolina. I said they're a great team. They have a tendency to have a soft side to them. I, But they got a good bracket because do you trust Kentucky? Do you trust UCLA and that weak front line they have, even though I like Leaf? But Welsh, they get pushed around sometimes. I mean, yeah. so you got a chance to go to the Final Four even though – they uh, no, Carolina annoys me sometimes because yeah, they got yeah the we were we were just talking about that Reverend but I'm a Carolina guy from okay. Cat's Cradle shout out to my friends at Cat's Cradle <laughs> and Coach Williams has one Achilles heel they do not defend the three but they're not going to play anyone until maybe the Elite Eight where they're going to have to defend the three. Now, now you're a father. What do you think about uh, what Alonzo Ball's father's doing? What's your opinion on that? You know, once they, at, at first I was a little bit annoyed by it, but then I thought about this. How many African-American athletes that have gone through up to the professional ranks, but they have fathers who never even attended one game? Think about that. Yeah. And how many? How many of them suffer in their lives as grown men because their fathers were never really involved? So, you know what? At first, I was a little annoyed by him, but then I had to turn around and applaud him because if he does not do that, who's going to do that for his son? I agree with you, Reverend, and I think you make a point that most people involved in college basketball, whether they're media, whether they're shock jocks, whatever they do for a living, they miss that point that you make. However, I think there's a balance. So yeah. you you might agree, you might disagree, but yeah. it's great that he's there. It's great that they have a father figure and a, and a man who, who cares about them since the time they were three years old, but I think he's lost his balance. You're talking about a billion dollars contract? Now, <laughs> I, 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 I first started watching all the brothers – when Lonzo was in seventh grade. And okay. he is really Jason Kidd with a jump shot. No denying yeah. that. Okay. But some of the other brothers now is is, is the one who just is going to graduate in May from Chino Hills. He's probably going to end up playing in Europe. And there's nothing wrong with that. But okay. now he's got all this pressure from his dad. Yeah, it's saying how great he's going to be. Right. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Listen, I just, I would just, I just, before we're done with that topic, I just, I yeah. agree with you, Reverend. I just think he's got to balance himself a little bit. And and I agree with you there. I, I do agree with with the balancing act. It, it does, and I I think that what will probably end up happening is once they're grown men, that'll probably taper down. It should at least they could probably just go to their dad and say, "Hey, dad, you know, like chill, you know." Um, but, and I do agree with you. There has to be balance. I mean, the, out, the Michael Jordan statement. And, and listen, you're talking about, he's talking about a billion dollar shoe deal. If you think about it, just look at what the Lakers gave Lou Aldang and Timothy Mozgov. A billion dollar shoe deal is not out of the question. You, you know, you know, Pastor Fry, I was happy until you talked about that. You know, we're both Laker fans. Listen, we got to keep losing, losing, losing. I, I got to get ball. Fall for ball. Fall, fall for ball. Fall, fall for ball. Te- teaming That's with the Russell. T-shirt. Teaming with Russell because this day and age, you could play two point guards and have them play off each other. 
team and lose for because ball's Hollywood. And we'll sit the father next to the Kardashians. I don't care. I just want to start <laughs> winning, man. You know, I, but I actually I like Clarkson more than Russell. Russell Russell scares me. He's a little bit too lazy for me. Now see now yeah. now Gerald has a relationship with Russell because of the uh, you know he's connected with. Um, Mount Verde, where he came from, and a lot of people have said that about Russell. That is like the knock when I read on Instagram quotes about him. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a baseball player, and I don't really even know the rules of baseball. Mm-hmm. But there used to be a guy in the Yankees who barely could get from the dugout to the batter's box, and then he hit the ball, and all of a sudden he's on <laughs> second base. Do you know who I'm talking about, Ron? Mickey Rivers. Mickey Rivers. Wow. So a lot mm. of people don't understand how hard D'Angelo works 12 months a mm. year. And, you know, we'll get Coach, Coach uh, Walton on the show one day, and he'll tell you he's one of the hardest working guys he's ever seen. And uh. Walton's got some rings because of a guy named Kobe, who yeah. arguably right. is the hardest working guy in the last 20 years. Yes. Right. Right. So so his temperament makes people think that he doesn't care or he doesn't work that hard. That guy works mm-hmm. so hard 12 months a year. And, and okay. the only thing that he might lack is just overall speed. That's what ball might have over him. But uh, I agree. I agree. And, 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 but you know what? If you get a ball, ball can guard the quicker guards. You could put him – you can mix and match if you get that. And then Paul George, I think that's a done deal because of Magic and Bird's relationship. And I'm I'm trading who I got to trade for Paul George. I have wanted Paul George for LA for the last some odd years, so I I I would like to see that kind of team. And then now we can start taking Laker calls. I can get my friend on and and all that good stuff. But listen, um, who you think is going to win the NCAA tournament? Give me your pick. I don't and don't say God told you. Don't do that. I, I won't. I, I don't care. <laughs> I got four kids. I ain't praying about no uh, tournament. Okay. Uh, More important things to pray about, Reverend. <laughs> Amen. I, that's all divine providence right there. But, um, I, 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 I still believe, I believe that North Carolina will meet Villanova again. But this time, North Carolina blows them out. Okay. Okay. That's, all right. I mean, that would be... That'd be good for Carolina to get that redemption and and Roy, who I really love, um, to, hey, to get another championship. If Villanova doesn't make that incredible shot, an incredible play, because it wasn't just the shot, it was also the pass. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, right. we're talking about Carolina repeating. Right. Yeah. And I was there live. Now, I, I liked that Carolina team last year. I thought they were really tough with Bryce Johnson. This year's team, they're going to have to grow. I mean, I'm going to watch them in the tournament and see because – there were a couple of games I watched in the regular season. They just, ugh, they just turn your stomach because you know you could get better effort from them. Well, you can't let up fifty-one points to, to two, four, six, eight. Duke is the team we hate, but um, you can't let up fifty-one points to Duke in the second half and expect to win. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And you shouldn't even give up fifty-one points to Duke in the second half. They're not even that good. I opinion. agree. So I, I I assume you guys got Villanova beating Duke in the Garden easily. And I don't know if if, if Duke is going to make it to next Sunday night. Duke, oh, they'll make it to next Sunday. They're not losing the next game. Come on, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to Duke. Well, Duke's going to do what Duke does, and no more comments from me about Duke. Listen, before before we end this, I want to make sure I ask you guys a question because I have not seen this guy Folt uh, play. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about him? What does he look like? Because they're talking about him being the number one pick. Who are you talking about? Mark Markel Folts. From what team? In, uh, he played for the Washington Huskies, I think. Oh, 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 oh! You're not talking about the guard, are you? Yeah, the guard. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, the guard's terrific. He's as good, just as good as Ball, I believe. Um, okay. he, he's got 20 pounds on Ball, got which makes him, on him, you know, we always talk about, Reverend, the college game and the pro game are two different sports. He's probably yes, a better pro player than he is a college player. Mm. But we have to wait and see who comes out. I like the big guy on Arizona. He's NBA ready. Marketing. Yes. 
yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Euro the, style. The, the Lakers need about three first round picks. <laughs> I know that, but let's start with ball. Let's let's keep losing for ball. Get Paul George, and then then let's see what falls in the lab. LA's always had a history of some star just mysteriously showing up in LA. Well, now the Magic's there. Everyone wants to play for Magic. Wayne Wade is in LA. Yes. Once we got the once we drained the swamp from an ownership, we um, <laughs> we got Magic and the real bus in there. You know, that was that we are good. And I hope this goes to L.A. I hope to hear that. I wouldn't. Do, please, please. That's yeah, just, yeah. I couldn't stand the buses. I hate. Forgive me, Pastor. But I, yeah. I mean, the, the, the sons. I love the daughter because she's a winner. And the daddy yeah. won 10 titles in 30 years. Hey, you, you can't top that. Um, but I'm glad Magic is there. Uh, I'm trying to get my dream interview set up for with Magic Johnson, man. You'll get it. Okay, okay. Because I know uh, Magic congrats. Inside Out. What'd you say? I know Magic Inside Out. I can ask some questions nobody asked him. Ron knows Magic's starting five I when know he was Magic a senior his, in high school. I know Magic his freshman year when they lost to Goose Givens in Kentucky and Kyle Lacey when he didn't have a good game. And but, then the following year, he came back and won the national championship. But Goose Givens might have had one of the games of all time. He had 43 points. Yes, yes. So And they weren't even keeping track of triple doubles. That's right. Though. That's right. So, <laughs> but, but listen, Pastor, I'm going to let you go. Uh, you know, yeah. you could call in. We could uh, have the chat. Oh, one more thing. Yeah. My buddy next to me, remember you were asking where your Oakland Raiders are going? He knew they were going to Vegas two years before they were going to Vegas. And I told you they were wow. going to Vegas. And I said, somebody told me they're going to Vegas, and they're in Vegas. They're headed to Vegas. I, I, I'm I'm upset with. I, I like know you are. Oakland. I really wish they would have. I wish they would have just built that city up. That city needs the Raiders, man, and they need the Raiders I, I, to. I, I you know what? You're right because I know a guy who comes on my show. He covers the Raiders, the A's, and the Golden State. That is a rabid, great fan base out there in Oakland. Yeah. I mean, we got fans everywhere, you know, and uh, and that, what would have been so tremendous is if okay, you're talking about bringing Marshawn Lynch to to the to the Oakland Raiders, and if you if you get that, oh my God! And he and Marshawn He's Lynch does a lot of stuff in the community in Oakland. Oh, come he, on he, now! I, I just I don't like that. I don't. Like, it's I not do done. Like, it's not I, done until it's done, fellas. And the owners might not vote. And approve the move. Okay, you heard Don't that. Don't be surprised if the owners delay the move. They I, right now, the people I spoke to this week, the owners are not going to approve the move unless something else goes down. Okay, you well, you, you the, heard that. The, the owners have been so unkind to the Raiders. That the NFL has been so unkind to the Raiders because of the relationship with Al Davis, and and you know. If they really want to run us in the ground, I can see them allowing us to go to Las Vegas just because of that. <laughs> good yeah. point. Good yeah, point. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is a very good point. Now, if that happens, I'm gonna I'm gonna be all over that. Listen, thanks for the call, buddy. God bless. Have a safe back. weekend. Enjoy the God. tournament. Okay. All right. I want to get back to that Washington situation because you had a, a very interesting story about the coach who got fired. Now, he's been a good coach at Washington. They're going to the tournament almost every year. They have one bad year and they fire him? What's going on there? They've had five bad years. They haven't been in the tournament. And the Pac-12 has only gotten better every year. So so they're feeling like the Pac-10 has moved past what he's done and he's going in the opposite direction and they want to catch because the Pac-10 is good now, man. You, You're right. You know what? I'm not close enough to the situation, but it's what happens in life. A new AD, a new president come in, you're vulnerable. And the final thing that was the last straw, attendance plummeting three years in a row. Oh, and he okay. had he had the number oh, the, okay. the okay. number one recruiting class in the nation coming in, and they're all decommitting now. Mm. Nobody mm. should ever sign a letter of intent. We don't want to get into that this morning, mm -hmm. but the one kid who didn't sign a letter of intent is already out. Wow, that's not good. That is not good. And and, and I'm going to tell you something. The Pac-10's got better. 
And then it's a bottom line business. Once the attendance go down. That's when the alumni gets worked up, and right. that's that's when they start looking at your 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 unemployment unemployment status. And I'm not trying to go in your backyard here, but same things going on this weekend. Their board meetings down at Georgetown. He's got to go. What do you mean? My, uh, he's got to go. He should. He be, has just got sh- to go. I'm a Georgetown fan. He should have been gone two years ago. He should have been gone two years ago. He got to go. I, I loved his dad. Loved John Thompson. But your son has to go. He has done nothing. He's been inept. It's just been a waste of time for those kids that committed there for four years. And I know one kid in particular that committed four years felt like he wasted four years. I mean, just old, archaic style. He has to go. I mean, and, I, and, and the reason he got this extra year, and I don't know which way the board meetings are going to go this weekend, mm-hmm. but the reason he got this extra year and he, they didn't move him to – because they're not going to fire them. They have to move them to alumni relations. or Move them move to alumni relations or something. O- I don't care. Offer them something. Give but them something. Last July 1st, guess what opened? What? Their new fitness and training center. And guess what it's called? The John Thompson Fitness and Training. <laughs> okay. Let him run that then. <laughs> I don't want him coaching the team. I don't care. All right. Let's get back to the tournament. All right. All right. Because then I, I don't mean getting... to get you angry. No, I know. I know. That gets me upset. All right. Um... The so we t- we got Arizona in, and we talked about Villanova Duke because I believe Villanova will get past Wisconsin even though Wisconsin's tricky. Though I think Duke has a better team than Villanova, but this is why I believe I th- Villanova's going to win. They play great at the Garden. If this was anywhere else, I think I would pick Duke. Jay Wright loves spending weekends or a week in New York City. Wow! And he knows how to handle his kids in New York City. They go down to the 9-11 Memorial. Okay. They go to museums. Before okay. before the Big East um, tournament got underway, they went to a Broadway play. He keeps his kids occupied and not focused 24-7 on the court. Mm. It's one of Jay's many, many skills. Many skills. And what Jay did, he kept this group hungry, even though they won the national championship in like a Cinderella year. There was no let up. And that's what impressed me the most, that they're just as hungry. The other interesting thing about Villanova that I think makes them such a, an attractive destination for talented high school kids is there's no pressure to repeat. There's no, no. pressure <coughs> you've got to win. The pressure is you have to graduate. Mm-hmm. Every kid that stayed four years with Jay has graduated. And Jay's, Jay and the Villanova community, they're happier and more he's, proud about that than they are about the national championship. He's perfect for Philadelphia. Perfect coach. He, I, I can never, ever see him leaving. And, and any of your listeners out there, Ron, if they're looking for a book to read th- mm-hmm. this summer or whenever, Jay's book, it's called Attitude. Wow. It's not just about basketball. It's about life. There's a lot of good lessons in there. Wow. And I got no connection to Villanova. I got no bias. I'm just keeping it real. Well, Mike Nardi comes on my show, so I am like connected with Villanova, and I, I always pull for them. Uh, he's a great guest. I followed him in high school. Uh, he has a good staff. Mike Nardi, he also played for that guy from Montverde. Yeah, Kevin Boyle. Kevin yeah, Boyle at St. Pat's <laughs> and Ray Miller. They built they built a program. I know because when I was a when I was an intern in college, that was the guy I was supposed to interview was Kevin Boyle when he was at Pat. So we go way back. So I know Boyle and all the staff and everything. So I, they're near and dear to my heart. So when Nardi went to Villanova, I definitely rooted for that group. And now he got a national championship. So that's good. He's got three national championships. And he yeah. arguably has the best player in high school that nobody even knows about, R.J. Barrett. Now his dad's going to be upset for me mentioning that on your show. But R.J. Barrett is a name for you basketball junkies to think about two years from now. And if you remember the name, his dad is Rowan Barrett, who's the number two guy. He basically runs what we call USA Basketball in Canada. He he runs Canada Basketball. And he sent him down to Florida to play for Kevin because Kevin developed Kyrie and everyone else. But let's stick to college. Okay, because that could be the next James Harden, but we'll get into that another time. College. Now, we want to talk about Blue Bloods. Kentucky UCLA, who's winning that game? If if they if 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 Kentucky gets past a very very tough Wichita tough minded Wichita State, 
which has one of the most underrated coaches in America. Right. Here. Who's probably going to have to leave this year. Oh. He has stayed, he stayed, he stayed. But this year, the coaching carousel is going to be crazy. There's so many jobs that are going to be open. Um, I, got a, I got a question for you, Ron. Mm-hmm. I'm more confident that Kentucky will get there mm-hmm. than the other team you think they're going to play. I don't trust Cincinnati. I know where you're going. I don't trust Cincinnati against UCLA. Should be. Now, UCLA Cincinnati should. got a system because UCLA gets punished on the backboards. Bingo. They re- do. Re- 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 rebounds and turnovers. Yes. Yes, if they you, will. If UCLA turns the ball over, as I think they will against that tough Cincinnati old school Big East defense, even though they're not in the Big East anymore, but they play Big East defense. They play Big East defense. I think so I'm team. more confident that Kentucky gets there than UCLA. UCLA is going to win because I don't trust Cincinnati. They get they go through lulls. I know they're a little better offensively, but they historically go through lulls. And I just think UCLA will squeak by. They're well, not going to beat them by a lot. I just think they're going to squeak by. They well, they, they might win by a lot. It's going to be about tempo. If the game's in the high 60s, low 70s, no, you know what? UCLA, UCLA loses. But you UCLA know loses. But if, if UCLA win, scores 90, obviously they're going to win. But you know what? They're going to have to grind out a win. You're not going to get 90 ever. Somehow, some way, maybe have ball go off in the second half and offered and they hit some shots. They're going to have to be able to play a team like Cincinnati and rebound and grind it out. And I'm, I'm going to roll the dice. And pick UCLA in a, in a tight game. Cincinnati's going to let, not let them get to You have points. UCLA going to your Final Four? Or too early? Too early because I, I got UCLA and Kentucky playing. I got Kentucky squeaking by Wichita State. They should kill Wichita State, but, you know, they'll go into their funks. They'll stop yeah. getting the ball to Bam. Right. They should get the ball to Bam, or Bam could go off and they win easy. They won't do that. Fox, I mean, his shot will come and go. You know, Monk, they, they should get Monk the ball more. They might not. I mean, Briscoe does stabilize them. He gives them maturity, and that's going to be big. I think that's the key for them to get by because they're not really deep. I watched it, and they don't really have a – their center's a three-point shooter. He just sits there and pops threes. You know, Cal, they, Cal, Cal really has cut his rotation from December once uh, conference play started. Mm-hmm. He's really – you're absolutely right. He only plays eight guys. Yeah, and normally he plays a lot of guys on Kentucky, but I watched the game yesterday. I said they're not deep. They're going to play – if they play UCLA, it's a revenge game because UCLA really ran them off the court at Rupp Arena. I know. That was gonna, UCLA's peak. That was UCLA's best game of the year. Best game of the year. Maybe they peaked too soon. Maybe. Ron, I how like, about that one? See, I think UCLA, because of their tempo, could give Carolina a little more trouble. But I think Kentucky's going to win, and Carolina could get revenge on Kentucky. I think matchup-wise, Kentucky, I don't know, because of their freshmen, they're not disciplined enough to attack Florida, uh, Carolina's weaknesses in a game. And I just think Roy Williams will figure out a way to uh, to get them to the Final Four. But if UCLA gets there, I think I'm going to ride the hot hand and, and, and it go with the Brewers. I think it's about matchups. I think it's 100% about matchups, but I also think the committee – didn't do Carolina any favors. No, because yeah. we were talking earlier how Coach Williams admits they don't do a good job defending the three. Mm-hmm. So UCLA and Kentucky, when those two freshmen on Kentucky, um, Malik Monk and um, Fox, when they're hitting their Jays, well, Monk went crazy in, the, in against Carolina. Fox, his shot comes and goes. So. Well, that's why they're freshmen, as yeah. we were talking about earlier. Freshmen. We're they're talking freshmen. about freshmen. Yeah. We're talking about practice. We're talking about freshmen. Yeah, because Calipari's like, hey, I'm coaching freshmen here. What do you want from me here? He's doing the interview. I was like, that guy's brilliant, man, because he deflected the attention away from how bad they were playing. And he's saying, hey, give me a break. I'm coaching freshmen, even though they're all world NBA players. But he's brilliant at doing that. It's it's a great tournament, and everyone's upset there haven't been any Cinderella stories. I don't, yeah. need, I don't need any Cinderella to watch basketball. If you're going to watch a lot of basketball, you got to be willing to watch some bad basketball. And we've seen some bad basketball the first two days. I don't mind a couple of upsets. I like when the Blue Bloods play. I like the UCLA, Kentuckys, and, and the Villanovas, and, and Dukes, and, and Gonzaga versus Arizona to see who runs the West Coast. Now, Gonzaga, and you know this better than me and better than anybody. 
Gonzaga plays Arizona, you're talking about potential recruits. You're talking about recruits going there thinking, I got a letter of intent to Arizona. I got a letter of intent to Gonzaga. And you know how kids are. Let me watch this game. And right. Maybe whoever wins, that swings that. And a lot of people on the East Coast have not seen Gonzaga because yes. the games are on late at night. Now, I have to reveal my Jesuit bias. But you're also talking, because Gonzaga is one of the best Jesuit universities in the country, but you're also talking about David and Goliath. Arizona and their budget versus Gonzaga. But Gonzaga might have the best guard in the whole tournament. We've talked about a lot of great guards in what you call the blue bud schools. Yeah. Gonzaga is not a blue bud school by any means. No. Have you ever been to their campus? They don't have the facilities or the resources a lot of other schools have. But they do a hell of a job, and they have a transfer who played at Finley Prep. Nigel Williams Gross. Nigel Williams Gross is a big time player. He he will be playing in the association as they call it now. Now now he actually I do believe he wants well, to come back another year because everybody's saying maybe he could go, maybe he could stay. Now he's going to st- stay right and play another year. I I don't know. I haven't um, spoken to anyone out there, so I don't know. But I would think. Unless they make it to the championship and he goes off and has, you know, four great games in a row, which can happen. <laughs> it can happen. Now then the, the, the pressure will be to go. But I think he stays another year because he transferred in. His body's only going to keep getting stronger and bigger. Yes. But we'll see. Now, I also want to, before we get into any more games, I do want to talk about uh, Chick Fil A, the show is sponsored by Chick Fil A, and I want to give a testimonial because I'm there all year long. I'm there all week. I love the food. They're better than every food chain, just from the simple fact that they cook their, they process their food in um, vegetable oil, I believe, and it's, it's it's a type of way they cook their food that makes the chicken fresh all the time. I always get a chicken cob salad. I'm going to tell you something. I was a fat slob a year and a half ago. Ate Chick-fil-A, ate their salad. I just get their nuggets. I get a, a low-cal drink, and I've, I've maintained a diet. And I'm going to tell you something. Everybody on Twitter, everybody listening, you need to go there if you want. If you have a choice of foods and you worry about your cholesterol, you worry, go to Chick-fil-A. Because they have the best salad. I got a chicken cob salad. You can get a grilled salad. The Southwest salad with extra peppers are good. And I just maintained that diet. I lost, I think, 40 to 50 pounds. I worked out a little bit. But I went from a fat slob to an actual halfway decent-looking guy. And I had a picture when I interviewed Briscoe a couple years ago. And I looked like Santa Claus, the black version of Santa Claus. And now I would like to interview them again so it just looks different because they still had that picture up there in the Chick-fil-A site and I just want to just gag when I see it but I'm happy I promoted them but that's the difference of of discipline and how great the food is and it's return customers and another thing the service they come serve you when you go get the food you sit down they come back and forth to see how the service is the owners are great the food is terrific and I'm going to tell you something this is something else my co-host could talk about you got other companies I will not mention. They have breakfast, but there's none better than Chick-fil-A because I get the bowl with the sausage and eggs and hash browns. And I'll go, I shouldn't say this, but I, I go for seconds because it's that good. Uh, they have the grilled chicken sandwich. They have the best biscuits. Their food is fresh. If you see the passion in my voice, it's because I go there. And you want to go there, Route 22, they serve you well. Even if you think it's crowded, they'll they'll accommodate you. They're the most accommodating restaurant in the United States. The other thing that people don't, unless you're from the South, Chick-fil-A, they introduced the idea of chicken for breakfast. Yes. And I work on Wall Street. If you're having a meeting, you're not going to bring in some other unnamed restaurant's breakfast food. Yes. But you can bring Chick-fil-A. To a trading floor, to a conference room. Yes. For 20 people, for 15 people, for eight people. It's going to be fresh. Everyone's going to be happy. And they introduced the whole idea of chicken for breakfast. Let me tell you something else. They got a promotion going till Easter. For Lent, they're having fish sandwiches. And I'm going to tell you, 
This is the best fast food fish sandwich I have ever tasted. They, I have the, uh, they have the fish sandwich, and they also have the fish strips, which I get. And I don't know if they they season it with pepper, but it is so delicious, and I've gotten that. And it's a, it's sad that they're gonna let it go Easter, but you got until Easter to get the fish strips and the fish sandwiches. Go in there on Route Route 22, 2319, U.S. Highway, Route 22 West, Union, New Jersey. And if you need any catering, they're very good at catering. You want to call Sean at 908-688-4515. 908-688-4515. And I, I'm proud to say they're the sponsor of my show. It's good that you have a sponsor of your show that you can co-sign on and not... You're not knowing, and you're just spitting out words and reading a teleprompter. I can just shoot off the cuff and tell you how good it is because I'm a I'm a customer. If the Reverend were still on the on the air with us, he would say, "Amen, Ron. Amen." <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm gonna tell you something else, and I'm trying to get Dante's from Dante's Boxing Nation on because they have the Triple G Jacobs fight. Um, he is in Vegas, and it's very difficult for him to get up. But I will continue to go NCAA tournament. We talked about the blue buzzer, but I want your opinion about this. Butler, Gonzaga, Wichita State, now Middle Tennessee. How are these mid-level teams consistently in the tournament and winning, and now they have like a little bit of a, a run, and now they have momentum? How are they able to do that when certain blue blood schools can't? Um. Two reasons, and let's point out to all your listeners, Middle Tennessee was the first 12 seed to ever be favored in their first yeah. round game. You were talking about boxing in Vegas. Well, Middle Tennessee opened as a one-point underdog, mm. but within 24 hours, they were one-and-a-half-point favorites, and they wow. stayed that way, and they put a beating on. So all those happy people out there have been following Middle Tennessee got rewarded. Got, re got rewarded, yeah. But, but to really answer your question, there's so many good basketball players across this country and in Canada. So if you can play, you might want to go to a non-blue blood school because mm -hmm. you're going to get playing time right away. And the coaches at the schools you just mentioned are some of the best talent developers out there because they have to be. Yeah, and you might go. You might be a kid and go to a Division One school and think you're good, and then run into a coach and it's the numbers game, and I don't want to play you. And now you got to wait. And now you lose your confidence. But instead, you go to like a George Mason, and 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 be a star. Or VCU, VCU, who's really developed. VCU, right. that's another team. Or or Danny Hurley, what he's doing up in Rhode Island. Rhode Island. You know, a month ago they were not. They had no chance of making the tournament, but they got healthy. And he developed his bench while they weren't healthy. Now, the other thing is kids today, and any of you high school players out there that are, are devoted listeners to Ron, always remember you want to be playing your best basketball when you're 28 to 32, not when you're 18 or 19. Yes, that is that is well said. That being said, you talked about Rhode Island. There's another team I, I habitually do not trust on my do not trust list. One is Baylor, which they'll be gone soon, and another one is Oregon. I, I know they they went far last year. They they're their best one of their best players out for the year, and Rhode Island. I got this feeling that Rhode Island might get them. Could be Rhode Island's hot, but um, now, or they, I think Oregon will be fine. But as we talked about um, right before the show started, there are certain teams that don't deserve your trust until they prove themselves. So. I don't trust Oregon either until they, 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 they give me a reason to trust them. <laughs> so I agree with you on that one too, Ron. Now, as far as teams I do trust, I don't like – they're not like the most – this is not the most talented team, but I trust Louisville. I love their guard because he's terrific. They're not super talented like a normal Patino team, but they play hard. Uh, I like them to get at least to the Elite Eight. They're not the most talented team in their bracket, but they're probably the best coached team in their bracket. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like Rick, but one thing no one disagrees about, the best tournament coach 
is Coach Rick Pitino. I mean, he's a basketball junkie. If you ever listen to him talk, this guy is, you know, he knows his stuff. Now, Purdue versus Iowa State. Iowa State is better, but Purdue is like old school. They go inside all night long. Swanigan and another big kid from Alabama, and they go inside, and they pound it inside. I don't know, do they have enough shooting to yes, win this game? Yes, yes. I, I really like Purdue, and you mentioned the key, the key player who – I would imagine you'd like to see in a Laker jersey one year. After I saw Kalen Swanigan take a three-point shot and make it, yeah, he could score inside. He's smart inside. He, he probably has a little, little of the body fat, but he's powerful. He gets offensive rebounds, and he knows what he's doing. He knows how to pass the ball. He's not being talked enough. He, up may, enough. he might be a 12- to 15-year NBA player. I, 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 but now – Kansas, Kansas versus Michigan State. I picked Miami to beat Michigan State because I thought they might have been too young. I love Iso, but Iso does it again, and Michigan State sitting there playing with house money with all these freshmen playing against Kansas, who's predicted to win this championship. Bill Self with that history of always losing, well, that's not always losing, but losing a lot in the early rounds, underachieving. What do you think about that game? That game makes me nervous. Let's go back to the word you just brought up, Ron. Trust. Yeah. Why should I trust Kansas? What has Kansas ever done for me? Disappoint, disappoint, disappoint. Except for the Danny Manning year. Let me let me tell you a story about Bill Self and uh, all I need to know about Kansas. Never wanted to play Michigan, uh, Wichita State. Was forced to play Wichita State, and they were leading, and Wichita State took it to them, and they weren't able to handle that. And that that's that makes I'm always nervous about that. And then the it was a Villanova. No, it was uh, who they lost to Villanova in a, in a lead eight. Yes, Villanova won it more. Well, <coughs> Vill Villanova played aggressively, mm -hmm. and Kansas has a tendency in their uh, under coach self, who I have great respect for, mm -hmm. to sometimes get a little soft in the second half, especially in pressure. Having yes. said that, they had an excellent regular season. They did yeah. a great job in their conference tournament. Mm -hmm. And they got Jackson, who's a stud as a player. I'm looking forward to that game. That's probably the, the number one game I want to see in the next two weeks. Louisville and Kansas? Yes. Got to get past Michigan. They should, but now if the game gets tight, can Kansas get tight? Because it's, a, it's like, hey, right. I got these freshmen. If I get beat by 50, so what? If it's close, so what? I'm just going to roll it out and, and – and, and do what I always do. I just said Patino's probably the best coach in his bracket because uh -huh. I didn't want to disrespect Coach Izzo. Coach Izzo, you can trust. Use, yes. use your word, trust. Yeah. Uh, they don't have the most talented team. They had a bad injury early in the season, but somehow they made a tournament, and I'll be damned. Oh, if they're in the tournament, anything can happen. Because yeah. right after Patino, I got Izzo. I got Izzo, too. I got Izzo, too. And um, I'm going to tell you something. Kansas needs to get a lead and get comfortable and, and put Michigan State away. I don't think you want this close. No, you you, you, you have to, to step tired. on their neck in the first 10 minutes first and 10 go minutes. up 14, 16. Stay up. If you let Michigan State hang around, yeah, anything can happen in that anything second half. Anything can happen. And then uh, now the, uh, the crowd who's neutral is going to start rooting for the underdog. Now you're getting tight. Because now you're a senior and you're looking up the scores close. You're like, I don't want to go home. And now you're at the free throw line. You're thinking about it. It's a tight game. And you might miss the shot. Now Michigan has a chance. They're playing with house money. They might hit a big three. And the crowd's going crazy now. It's two minutes left and you're losing. And now you're thinking, here we go again. And guess who will, will be at that game? Your guy, Magic Johnson. Oh. Because he is loyal. He is very loyal. He, Him and Mateen Cleaves. They yes, two yes, Mateen is loyal always there too. Michigan State player alums, but I, I I like Kansas to get by there. And Kansas and Louisville would be one for the ages. This is my opinion. The best Final Eight game I saw of the last ten years was in Illinois with Illinois with Deron Williams and 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 Hurd. I, I'm trying to remember the rest of the three guard rotation played Arizona with uh, they had Shakur. Stevenson at the point. It was Lou Olson was one of his last yeah, couple years. That was the end of the that was, that was the end of the Lou Olson was, era. That, that was one of the best.
best games ever saw. They were up 16 in Chicago with the Illinois crowd. Bill Murray there. They come back and beat Arizona, but it was just the most intense game, and my favorite broadcast of all time was doing it with Dick Enberg, and it was just it was just a classic. I'll never forget that one. That was one of the best college games I ever saw. Not No controversy as far as officiating. It was just a good, clean game. Um, Kansas and Louisville could could be that. But there's some good ones. Duke and uh, a Villanova. And like we said, Arizona but versus Gonzaga. If Villanova and Duke happen, mm-hmm. that's going to be on Sunday night mm-hmm. in New York City mm-hmm. at Madison Square Garden. I got Jay Wright and his squad if that game happens. I, I do too, even though I just believe my heart. I think Duke has more talent than Villanova. But it's just, if it was in Greensboro, I'm picking Duke. But it's at the Garden. No Jim Beheim jokes. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's, I forgot about that. Yeah. that. You know what? That's so ridiculous that Syracuse is in the ACC. They're a Big East team. I mean, get me started. But anyway, um, yeah, I just – that because they're two evenly matched teams, I think Duke might be a little better. But Villanova, you have to beat Villanova if you're going to. Villanova's not going to give you any games. And Duke is too young. And some of their young players really didn't start playing until February 1st. But some, of, but those guys are gonna be gone though. They're gonna be gone to the NBA. They should. So I mean, they're young, but they're gonna be gone. He's gonna have to get another young team coming in because I know Tatum's gone and and Grayson Allen's gone. But Grayson Allen, he's somebody he, that's he, gonna be getting. He might catch a beat down. Talk about trust. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not drafting Grayson Allen. You know uh, who I am drafting? Who? Giles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another great player from Oak Hill. Yep. Yep. And he has had two ACL surgeries that he's overcome people forget about that and he's only 19 years old that's why i like villanova because duke's too young okay i I like villanova too um and i like carolina and kentucky is just that is that a sunday game i don't know if that's a i think that'll be a saturday game if it happens they're gonna make that the last game then that's the game that'll be the game on saturday night if it happens yeah that'll be the game and that's I, I like Carolina if they run into each other. Um, I like Carolina even more as the show goes on mm-hmm. because our guest, the Reverend, <laughs> I thought he was going to be talking to UVA smack. Well, he, but he's a he, he he's a he's a heel. He likes to heal. He's a heel, man. You know, you're divine you're, intervention. Don't ever forget about how important that is. Yeah, when, when a nineteen or twenty year old. <laughs> Your old kid has to make a foul shot or, or one of those long shots, one of the miracle shots. Yep. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. And the basketball gods old old Carolina after what happened last year in the Nova game. Oh, they they definitely do. They definitely do, man. Uh, I tell you though, coming up, and I, I know we talk about the Final Four. Now near the end of the month, I'm actually going to do a little baseball preview. And this is exciting for me because this is unfamiliar territory because I'm a Chicago Cubs fan. So I'm not really used to a ring ceremony. It hadn't happened since Abraham Lincoln was our pitcher. So it's a little different. Um, I was greedy. I wanted to see if they could get King Felix, but they didn't. Uh, It's going to be exciting. I wanted Chapman to stay, but the Yankees, as usual, wait and grab. If George Steinberg was alive, he'd be looking at Bryant. He'd be looking at Izzo. He'd have a plan of contingency to grab up all the young Cubs stars. He would sit there and be like, when is their contract up? I'm glad the younger guys have a break, but that's what Steinberg would do. When when are you going to do that um, baseball preview show? Because I'll be listening. I'm going to do it. The weekend after the Final Four, probably? After the Final Four, I'm going to do a baseball preview show. I got the uh, Al Yellen, who wrote, who writes for the Cubs, to, to uh, talk. Um, so I'll be listening. I, I probably have a Dodger writer. My dad's a Dodger fan. That was sweet because he talked so much junk before that playoffs. He said, there's no way. The Cubs always lose. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe this year's different. <laughs> and they beat him. And they, and they beat my favorite pitcher. Uh, my favorite, favorite pitcher on the Dodgers is their ace. And I hated to see him get beat because they always talk about how bad he is. But I would – his contract's up. I would take him on the Cubs. I love that kid. He's a good gamer. Look, Maddox was bad in, in, in the postseason. It happens. Pitchers, Jim Palmer was bad in the, 
and he wasn't great in the postseason, but he's a great regular season. So it happens, you know. But anyway, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm also looking forward to getting Kenny Anderson because we're we're both a, a mutual friend, and I want to talk about the Georgia Tech years and his new movie, and, and we're going to get him on. Uh, his Kenny is a delight, and I encourage all your listeners to be on the lookout for that. And Kenny has his documentary out. Um, it's getting more and more um, recognition. It's called Mr. Chibs. Yes. Basketball yes. is easy. Life is hard. And he opens up his his soul, his heart, and his history. Completely honest. Now, let me tell you, does he go to those NBA emporiums? Because that would be good to talk to younger kids who are coming up, who are being drafted by the NBA, and who have all these hangers on, and you have to be careful because you could go one way or the next. Is he the type of guy where he would go on tour and try to talk to maybe the younger kids? Because that would be awesome. So Kenny played for, I believe, eight teams in the association. Mm-hmm. And only four of the eight, maybe maybe played for nine, I forget at the end, at the current moment, I'm not sure if it was eight or nine, but only four of the teams he's played for have invited him back to talk. Wow. I'm going to tell you but something. But that's all going to change as the documentary Well, yeah, because it, it'll, it'll, bring, it'll bring up uh, stuff. He'll get hotter and, and – um, Things will get more exciting, and then now the other teams will be like, "Hey, we saw the movie. Come on in and talk yeah. to." You. Yeah, it, you, know it, it, you know what? I don't believe in coincidence. Uh-huh. The word of this show today has been trust. Mm-hmm. Teams that don't trust him will trust him after they say, hey, "Let me watch a few, <laughs> a few clips from this documentary." Definitely, definitely, definitely. And I also. Remember, that net team was so close, and then Drazen got killed the next year. And they were close to being that team was going to play Chicago instead of the Knicks because they were beating the Knicks habitually. I remember Drazen Petrovic lit up Gerald Wilkins and cursed him out in Yugoslavia. And I watched the game. <laughs> he was up and down the court, lighting him up, and I was like, the Nets are coming. And then that, that ruined their momentum. May Drazen rest in peace. Yes. One of the great offensive players. I like him in NBA than, history. I like him better than Ginobili. I thought he's a better player than Ginobili. I'm, and one of the my, first Europeans. Yes. So any of your listeners that aren't familiar, go ahead and Google D R A Z E N Petrovic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Um, so we're all about sharing the knowledge. Yes. Now our next show we're going to be live at Chick Fil A. I'm I'm efforting Nick Richards. Uh, I'm working so he's on going to play for Coach Cal at Kentucky. In Kentucky, and I'm working on a couple other guests. Uh, thanks to my buddy over here. I, uh, I, I'll place a call during the week. Hey, G, uh, can you help me out? We'll have a couple of Big East coaches if they're not still alive in the tournament. Yeah, we'll get them in a good mood. Get them, get them some chicken. Once they eat the food, they're gonna, they'll be return guests. But I tell you, it's been a pleasure doing this show, Gerald. It's been a lot of fun. We always do this because I'm texting you during the game. You're the only guy. I text during the games. I don't like talking to people. I'll see a call. I'm like, don't call me back, please. Not you. I'm like, okay, I got to text him because you are on my wavelength. Amen, brother. It's all about trust. Definitely. And for those of you that um, maybe are new to Ron's show, keep coming back. It's kind of like the game. If you love basketball, basketball will love you back. That is how we should end.